Hello folks and welcome to the final part of Project Aurus Ensis. This video, we need to finish this thing and there's an awful lot still to do even though it may not look it. So the first big thing is we need to look at the wiring and that involves doing all of the ATX pins, the PCIe, EPS, all of the wiring for the fans, for the controllers, lighting, there's an awful lot in there and it's absolutely vital that we get it done first because once those panels are in, we're not going to have access to anything once we've put all of this water cooling gear in. So I need to make sure that everything is in there and actually working before I put all of this stuff in. Now in terms of the water cooling gear, we're going to go into it in uh, more detail later on in the video when we're at that part. But for the most part, we've gone with a similar kind of look with all this stuff. So I'm going to go with some satin tubing. We've got Corsair Hydrobex fittings. Uh, I'm only going to be using the pump from the XD5 reservoir over here, as is sort of my tradition at this point. Um, we've got the uh, lovely chrome fittings, which should fit in with all the silver here in the build. Um, and then also, we've got the white radiators. Now I did consider painting the radiator silver, but the problem here is that it's actually quite difficult to match silver. And currently with all this lockdown stuff, it's actually really difficult to get paint here. I can sort of get industrial stuff, but I, my workshop's now too dense to use any of that equipment. So I'm sort of relegated to using only spray cans. And the results, uh, you know, I think I'd actually rather stick with a white finish paired with these lovely fans. So these are the QL fans. Um, these have white frames and also silver accents, so it should actually tie everything together because these are going to be on the front of the radiators, so they're going to be facing you here. They're going to be visible. The radiators themselves will only be visible from the sides, and actually when you put in all the lighting and everything else, the white will just take on the colours from whatever's around it essentially. So I think in the long run that's going to be the best move, and so that's what I've gone for with this one. As I said though, we need to start with the wiring, so let's just pack some of this stuff away for now and I can show you what's what with the wiring because there's some pretty cool stuff that I've put into this already that I'd like to share with you. Of course, with Ensys being an Aorus PC, we're going to be using an Aorus power supply, in this case the P850W Gold. And this is a fully modular power supply, but it comes stock with ribbon cables, which don't look very nice. So we're going to have to go aftermarket with this. Now you could go with something like Cable Mod, but for a build like this, that would be an absolute sin and definitely cheating. If you're going to do a proper mod, use real cables. And to do that, we're going to have to make our own from scratch because we've got something very special. So remember when I made this motherboard tray, we have all of these channels built into it. And this is what we're going to be doing. So if we just take it off. So this cover piece integrates all the cables into these channels on the back of the motherboard tray. And this is where it gets really fun. In the last episode, whilst I was machining the remaining panels for the chassis, I also added in these to the mix, which are cable combs, but they're not standard ones. These ones actually have little flanges on the side and they link inside the plate like so. And this is going to allow me to take my cables and route them from the side of the motherboard because this one has a 90 degree connector. It's going to go around the side, up along the top, and then it's going to go into the plate from the top. Similarly for the EPS pins, it's going to go loop around in a more sort of classic fashion and then go into the top over here. They then snake over by using a few more cones to hold everything in place. The handy thing about the combs here is that it meant that I could actually use slightly thinner acrylic and hold the cables a little bit above it because normally if you're doing this you need to have them sunk quite deep because actually the wires they move and undulate a little bit. So you either need lots of cones throughout or you need ones to hold them in position otherwise there's no hope in putting one of these back. But because I've got the combs here they should allow it to fit nicely because it will keep everything aligned in the channels. Since we're going full custom cables, there's one more piece of equipment that will dramatically ease this whole process, and that is a custom cable pinout chart. I'm so proud of this one. I spent absolutely ages making this system. It basically uses a uh, configurator in Fusion to create all of the connectors. And then in Photoshop, I've got a template where I can easily assign all of the values. And this means I can use this for future power supplies as well very easily. Even if they've got different types of connectors, I just change the number in Fusion and then it will change this one for me. 
Now I'm going to be putting up this system for download in the description so you can have a play with it yourself. And if you happen to have an Aorus P850W power supply, make sure it's the correct revision. You can indeed use this yourself. You can also use the template to construct your own ones. Because I think this 3D view is way easier to interpret than the 2D one. Because the problem with cables is that you have to look at them from either the front or the back. And everyone has a preference. Some people use the front because it has like keyed parts to the cables, uh, which makes it easier to track. But then the problem with viewing from the front is that you put a cable in the back, so you turn it around and suddenly you get lost and it's all a jumble. I hate that. I find that absolutely impossible to work with. Most of the other ones are also very harshly kind of drawn up. And actually, I just find it really difficult to follow any of the existing ones. So I ended up making my own. And quite often, I just went the entire process because it takes ages to build one from scratch. If you have a system that works already, all you need to do is move around the corresponding colors and numbers on the power supply side. And that's all there is to it because this side remains the same. So that should make the whole process a lot easier. And I'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comments as well, because I put a lot of work into it. That's enough waffle for now though. Let's get into making the cables themselves and then we can reconvene when I'm about to sleeve the 24 pin. So we're gonna do the 24 pin in its entirety since that is the big one. And then we'll do the other ones afterwards. And I'll show you what my sleeving choices are when I've done the initial cables. Crikey, this step has taken absolutely ages, but I think it's worth it. So this is the general layout of this cable. Now it doesn't have pins on this side for a very valid reason. I want to add those later with the sleeving. Now there's also a lot of slack in this cable at the moment, and that's because when you put the sleeve on, obviously the whole wire bulks up. And so you need a little bit more give just so you can get your runs exactly nice and smooth. So that's why it looks a bit straggly at the moment. And also remember the holes for these um, cable combs are much larger than the diameter of this wire. So it's always gonna flop around a little bit. With the sleeving, it should fit nice and tightly. Now talking about sleeving, we've got some pretty cool stuff. This is my plan. So this is MDPCX clear. Now the cool thing about clear is obviously it doesn't necessarily have much of a color of its own. It's largely transparent. And what it means is it takes on the color of the wire, but it doesn't go black. Because it has this sort of um, translucent quality to it, it actually forms into a very interesting silver. Now obviously a lot of this is silver and I think that's a really good base color to use for this one. And the cool thing about the silver here is that it has an interesting depth to it. Now I've used it before and it's incredibly effective. In fact, I actually prefer this over the real MDPCX silver and even more so over the silver that I use quite often previously, like I used in the uh, G-Skill build a while back. Now this looks really good on its own, but it does need a lovely contrast. So to do that, I'm going to be adding this, which is a carbon weave. Now this is obviously much darker and should give that nice contrast in the lines. And the idea here is I can have it on parts here and have it flow through the back. And I'll do the same thing obviously through the EPS and the PCIe. And so it should give a really nice effect. Now, what I'm playing with as well is potentially adding a third color. I'm a little bit mixed. I do like using two colors. Sometimes three does work quite well, especially since these are quite neutral. So maybe I'll add a single layer of black or maybe white over the dark. We'll see. Um, at the moment, this is my plan and that's what I'm going to go with. And if I want to change it, obviously I can do it as I'm busy sleeving things up because I'm doing every wire individually, I'll be able to tell as I go along. But for now, we need to get on that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all the sleeving for this and then I'm also going to make up these wires over here because now that I've done this one, this pinout is horrendous. Uh, this is possibly the worst pinout I have ever used. Everything crosses over all over the place. It is absolutely nutty. So I'd much rather have a closer to one-to-one -one pinout, but anyway, we will make do, this is what we've got, and it looks okay. The problem is it does come out a little bit messy. So I'm gonna do my best. Hopefully with all the sleeving, that should look a little bit better. Fingers crossed the ones that go over it also hide it a little bit, and of course we can have the radiate here so you won't be able to see it anyway, but it's still a little bit annoying. But either way, let's get on with that, and then we'll have some proper finished cables to show you in a minute.
Look at it. This is the best feeling ever when you finish a rig that's been going on for as long as this one and has so many complicated elements that you've had to learn on the fly and design from scratch. So to see it all boot up and actually work and function properly is just unbelievable. Now, sorry I couldn't get this video out sooner, but as you may have seen from the community tab, things are tricky. So a huge amount of time had to go into the wiring in particular, not just the visible cables over there, all the things like the RGB cables on the inside, even the tubing was an absolute nightmare. It doesn't look like it because all the runs are really quite short. But interestingly enough, because the runs are so short, it actually made them incredibly unforgiving. So all these runs here by the CPU area, obviously they're multiple bends, but they have different bend radii too. So some are tighter and the others are wider. And I had to make sure everything lines up because if you're even one to two millimeters out on a short run, it becomes incredibly noticeable, especially with so many straight edges and angles in a build like this. The final hurdle, of course, had to be the RG. B, which has become a bit of a meme with how often it can go wrong. And the problem is this build has an awful lot of it and it's integral to the theme. Of course, it looks great without the RGB, but with it, I think it elevates certain parts of it because I just love how the personality of the build changes with the different lighting profiles. It looks completely different now to when it's rocking red and yellow or the pink and sort of peach color schemes. And I think it adds a really interesting dimension to this rig. Now, of the LEDs in here, the fans were the easiest. So these are the QL120 fans from uh, Corsair. And I just basically redid the cables, put them in there just to make it a little bit easier. It's connected to a lighting node core, which is underneath here. And that comes with the fans. IQ just recognized them straight off the bat, just set them all up, added some custom gradients and pretty simple. I can swap profiles very easily. And I've basically gone and made those profiles similar to the other lighting effects elsewhere on the rig. Pretty good. The plan for these LEDs in the other parts though, was to have them controlled by the motherboard. However, there was a fly in the ointment there and that is RGB Fusion 2. So that's the software which controls all of the Aorus components. And the problem there is that that software is horrendous. I mean, it just doesn't work. It's absolutely terrible. I can't even control the individual LEDs properly on the memory, so I can't get nice gradients on there. You can't do static gradients anywhere. They've got loads of flickering effects for some reason, but no ability to make your own animations and effects. It's incredibly limited. And when you've got this many LEDs here, I don't actually want it to do the standard color pulse because that's incredibly boring. What's the point in having digital RGB strips if they essentially act like 12 volt RGB? A complete waste of time and pointless. So since I couldn't get the motherboard to control anything properly, I've actually taken it off the motherboard and I put it on the same old Fantex controller that I've been using in all the photos up until now. And that's how it has this lovely consistent look to the previous videos. And I really like it. I love these gradients. I think they have a really wonderful color combination set to them. And then I've basically just used those to construct the profiles for the Corsair fans. Now, if you do like these color combinations, you can actually recreate them pretty closely with an IQ. It's a little bit of a tricky operation because you have to do it very manually, but it is possible. And Alex Krastev, who I've linked below, has a fantastic tutorial set on how to make them. So I used his guides and profiles in these ones, so I can't unfortunately share these ones as they're from his private Patreon, but do feel free to check out that video and potentially also download from his Patreon as well. They really are fantastic profiles and he's got them for keyboards, mice, the whole lot. So if you have a full setup with loads of Corsair peripherals, you can actually get these going across the whole bunch and it looks pretty interesting. Now, whilst this is the final construction video for Ensys, we will also be doing a full start to finish montage covering the whole process. And it will also feature some special footage that wasn't in the previous part because I have filmed an awful lot for each one of these videos and we have to cut and chop little bits and put them into appropriate parts of the videos. So that means the final footage always has a lot of additional nuggets that perhaps didn't make it into previous parts. So definitely stay tuned for that. It should be a fun watch. It'll be nice and chill. You can just watch through the whole process and relax. 
Before that video comes out, we're also going to have Mod of the Year, which should be pretty exciting because we've got both our Scratch Build and Case Mod categories to go through. Thank you to everybody who sent nominations to the email. I've been going through those and assembling the list of entrants. It should be pretty exciting. Now, this news will also please some of you. We've got Aquacaris returning at last. But it's not going to be straightforward because I still have a number of things to wait for with that one. So we're going to need the water block for the GPU, of course. I also need a few other bits and bolts for radiators. I'm going to start, though, by making the DDC pump tops that I had teased a few months ago. And I think that's a good way to ease back into the project. We're also going to be doing a 4000D sort of mini mod. So it's not as in-depth as this one but it's going to be a good fun one that could be done uh, in between the parts of Aquacaris. So we're going to get started with Aquacaris first, and then we're going to do 4000D, but then we're going to continue on with Aquacaris after that when I have all the components and I've had the ability to model things up and actually get making things, because I don't really want to film just remaking the old parts. I'd rather just get those done and out of the way, and then we can focus on moving forwards instead. And before we finish up, I just want to thank each and every one of you who's not only followed this project, but followed the whole journey on the channel. I was absolutely overwhelmed to read all the messages of support on the latest community tab. I was quite down not being able to hit the deadline that I had internally. And seeing all those wonderful comments flood in is really quite something. And I feel very much blessed to have so many people who are involved in the work and enjoying the projects. So to all of those, Thank you very much. You've made it an absolute wonderful experience to try and finish this build and work through all the difficulties. And I think it's been worth it. Now, of course, if by some miracle you've made it to this point in the video and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, you better fix that right now because we have some incredible projects just around the corner. You don't want to miss any of them. You also don't want to miss Mod of the Year. It's a great event with some fantastic entrants. Also, you can find us over on Instagram, bills.gg, Twitter, Facebook, and of course our Discord server, which is also linked below. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to pop over to our merchandise store, which is linked below, and see if anything strikes your fancy. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much for being part of this process, and I'll catch you next time.